I would like to call the meeting to order of the UDC. It's 6.30 on April 8, 2015. Uh, first, uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Sawhill. Here. Ms. Sullivan. Here. Ms. Emerton. Here. Mr. Winchester. Here. Ms. Ream. Here. Mr. Condon. Here. Mr. Leonardi. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. I would like to announce that we have a current evening. Uh, next, we move to the minutes. Uh, can we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Okay, we have a motion for approval by Monica Emerton and a second by Nicole Ram. Next, we're moving to disclosures. Uh, do we have any disclosures for this meeting? Nicole? Yes, Madam Chair. I. Um would like to disclose on the case 2015-0008 site and landscape plan approval on the consent agenda. I've been recused from, um, from this case and will continue to do so. Any other disclosures? Uh, Joe Miller? Yes, in the same case, 2015-0008, I was not yet seated on the commission, so I'll be abstaining. And we continue with Commissioner Ed Leonelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was not present at the March meeting, and I'd like to abstain from the consent agenda items for case number 2014-0223 and 2014-024. And finally, I would like to be excused from the consent agenda, resolution 2015-006 in 2015-007. Next, uh, we move uh, for the approval of the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I would like to pull an item from the consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved to pull case 2015-008, final public facility site plan review and landscape plan review per AMC 2115-015 and AMC 2115-025 for Chester Creek Sports Complex, parking area and Mulcahy Stadium reconstruction from that consent agenda by James Sawhill. And I need a second. Madam Chair, on our little computer monitors here, it has approved consent agenda and moved by Mr. Condon. I'll withdraw that. <clears throat> we were in the motion. Okay, we need a motion in the floor to pull the consent agenda. Uh, we have a motion by James Sawhill, and we have a second by Monica Emerton. Uh, case 2015-0008 uh, goes to the regu regular agenda. Okay, now we are back to the regular agenda. Uh, case 2015-0015 has been postponed to August 12, 2015. And we move on to case uh, 2015-008, uh, final public facility site plan review and landscape plan review for Chester Creek Sports Complex parking area and Mulcahy Stadium reconstruction. Uh, Mr. Sawhill, uh, can you speak to your motion? I, I guess I'm a little confused. Um, 
Do we need to finish our consent agenda? I don't think we had a motion for the rest of the consent oh, agenda. Oh, to be approved. Uh, that's true. Uh, okay. So, so maybe um, we do that first, then. Yes, I, I will get back to that. So can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I have one. I think Joel made a motion previously for the consent agenda. Yes, I withdrew yeah. that. Okay, Could maybe make it again. Huh. Yeah. We can't yet because this is showing the case up here. Should right we do now. it at the end of the meeting? Would that be going to be better for everybody? Yes. <laughs> let's go back to that at the end of the meeting. <laughs> so let's move on ball. to the regular agenda. <laughs> so we are regular agenda. Case 2015-0015 has been postponed to August 12, 2015, and we move on to Case 2015-0008, Final Public Facility Site Plan Review and Landscape Plan Review for Chester Creek Sports Complex Parking Area and Mulcahy Stadium Reconstruction. Uh, can we please, uh, Commissioner Jim Sawhill, speak to your motion? Um, I, I just pulled it from the consent agenda, and, and we don't have a motion on the floor yet for, for the case. I, I have some, some concerns um, with the final site plan that's before us tonight. And uh, if the applicant could come up, I can maybe express some of my concerns and give them an opportunity to uh, address them. And uh, then with that information, we can go forward with the motion and, and see what we want to do. Okay, will you please state your name and spell it for the record? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, my name is Dwayne Adams, D-W-A-Y-N-E-A-D-A-M-S of Earthscape, and representing the petitioner in this case. Uh, and I have with me representatives of Stantec, as well as uh, Mr. John Rada, the Director of Parks and Recreation. And uh, we're, we'd be happy to try to field questions, as you may have. Okay, Commissioner Sahil, do you have any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess the first figure I'm going to refer to is in the uh, parking analysis that was done by, by Stantec. Um, and there's a figure, figure number two, which shows the, the site plan um, that was in the concept approval. Yes. And uh, the site plan that was in the concept approval showed a new access from A Street. I know you anticipated my questions. And a uh, new exit onto Gamble Street. And when we approved that site plan, I thought those were important components, and I thought they were a great idea, and I was really happy to see them. And then on the final site plan, which is... Uh, in the packet of information uh, prepared, it's uh, one of your foldouts, Exhibit C Site Plan. Um, those two elements have been removed, and, and I'm, I'm really concerned about these changes in the final site plan, and I'm not sure with these changes that I can support this final site plan. Um, I think they're important. Um, so my initial reaction is to vote no on the final site plan. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, maybe elaborate on, on why you eliminated those and why they're not a good idea. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Sawhill, uh, just to give uh, some history, the, the, the uh, figure two to which uh, Commissioner Sawhill uh, relates uh, goes back to a, a study that was done in 2005, finalized in 2006 by Land Design North firm that I was with, and USKH, which is now Stantec, uh, did the traffic analysis at that point. Uh, what that uh, did not include in that traffic analysis was a thorough examination interior other than how best to physically organize the site to provide better uh, traffic flow, and that was the singular focus of everything interior. The uh, I'll, I'll have Mr. Uh, Will Webb of, of Stantec get into particulars, but in, in summary, 
uh, when we last came to the commission, we were directed then to, to go back and look at the best way of resolving uh, circulation questions that, that Commissioner Sawhill and, and the commission had raised. Uh, upon looking at that and doing uh, much more thorough analysis at the interior workings as well as the exterior workings of traffic flow as it entered and left the site, uh, there were two fundamental uh, issues that were identified. The first of those is that, especially on egress, the particular problem isn't related to, I mean, it, it greatly relates to the site organization and wayfinding within the area as well as some crimp spots. But the singular thing that really uh, detains vehicles is at the entry. And anyone who's been to a ticketed event, uh, be it an Aces game or sometimes graduation games or high school basketball recently uh, uh, finished a, a couple weeks ago, uh, what happens is you, you queue up uh, to come into the lot, there are two ticket takers on the east lots, I mean west lot, there's one actually ticket taker on the west lot and two ticket takers on the east or west lot, excuse me, and that's where everything gets gummed up. And so as a result of how slow that, that takes place, that actually ends up backing up traffic and I've seen it, I'm, I am season ticket holder of the Aces, so I go to a lot of Aces games and playoff games in particular. It backs all the way up to almost fireweed. But the fundamental problem is related to the fact that that ticket taking really gums things up. That someone has to come up, they have to have the correct change. Nobody ever has a correct change. So the guy's got to get the ticket. He's wearing gloves. It's cold. It takes a, a long period of time for that to take place. And that was in the traffic analysis. Um, and right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and so that, that is a fundamental problem with respect to ingress is that that really is, is the, the problem. The secondary problem is that regardless of how many uh, exits we put on this site, we could put uh, 20 exits on this site, the constraining factor isn't so much how many exits we have. The fundamental issue is one of site organization, uh, which we're dealing with in a, in a pretty dramatic uh, way. But second of all, the number of uh, access lanes that are available to traffic as it's exiting. Right now, for example, traffic exits on the northern tier and as it's heading to go south and the eastern tier of lots also exits in two lanes. No matter how many lanes we were to put on here, we are still constrained to those two lanes. Likewise, for traffic that's trying to exit to the north via A Street, the same situation exists. No matter how many lanes we provide or, or exits we provide from these lots, we're still constrained to two lanes regardless of what we do. And that's the constraint right there. Um, so that, that's a quick summary and uh, I'm happy to uh, try to answer, but I would defer to for particulars to Mr. Will Webb, who is a, a PTOE, which apparently means tremendous things in the world of traffic engineering. Uh, and uh, he certainly knows a lot more about traffic engineering than I do. But in summary, those are the two constraint things is that capture it, Will. Um, I have a, a, another question on the site design itself, and then maybe we can give Will an, an opportunity to, to provide some additional information. Um, on the original site plan that we approved, did the concept approval on, um, we're, we're restriping part of the parking lot, and then we're reconstructing a portion of the parking lot. And then we have a walkway that goes through the middle of the parking lot. And in the previous approval, we had a striped walkway that continued from there over to Sullivan Arena. And on this final, that striped walkway has been eliminated and could you speak to why that's a good idea? Because I kind of like the stripe walkway all the way to the arena. I thought that was a Is good a idea. Stripe walk? Um, fundamentally, our, our concern, and, and I don't have that, that previous plan, and I apologize for that. Uh, the issue is uh, one primarily of site organization, and that is that in the winter, all this gets covered up. 
So in, in the winter, it's covered with snow. And if you've ever been to uh, anything, a winter event there, and that actually is other than if the Aces are in a playoff game and there's a soccer game taking place at uh, Anchorage Football Stadium, and maybe some have been bulky or maybe opening day at uh, Mulcahy Stadium. It, it's one of those big red events is what we used to call them. Um, the, uh, in, in most of the times that these heavy events take place, uh, the, the site is basically covered in snow. And so it's up to the traffic control crew to go out there and figure out where to put lanes because they don't really s see that either. Uh, and so the, the hope that, that this would actually end up where it needs to be maybe somewhat um, uh, obscured by the snow. And so what we've done is it exits there, but fundamentally most people are moving up the traffic lanes. And that's what uh, we're trying to do is get them into the travel lanes because if they're in, if they're in the travel lanes, they're visible and as, as traffic is moving, they can see the people. What we're trying to avoid is that cut through traffic that, that goes between uh, uh, lines of, of parked cars and then suddenly behind a pickup or an SUV some kid steps out into traffic not knowing that there's oncoming traffic. So um, uh, certainly those those lanes could be dedicated uh, to through uh, traffic, pedestrian traffic, but whether people would actually use them and recognize them and traffic control would recognize them gets a little fuzzy, but that's fundamentally it. Yeah, and, and I understand that striping in the winter is not a great tough, thing, but right? there's no striping six months a year or no snow six months a year, and, and it is visible. And I'm, I'm just a little concerned that we're dead ending a walkway into parking and not providing right. a, a, a through movement for that. So that's still a concern of mine. And those are the only two questions I had, Madam Chair. And I don't know if the applicant wants to provide additional testimony on the uh, uh, entrance exit information or not. Does that capture it pretty much? Just a second. Um, the comment from Mr. Dean said of, of uh, Stantec was simply we aren't opposed to a painted walkway in that area if that was something that was important. Um, we don't really have anything to add. Uh, certainly uh, Will is much more familiar with that, but the fundamental issue is limitation of those two travel, traffic lanes, which is all we have to work regardless of how many exits we provide. And secondarily, the, uh, the, uh, the limitations that are provided by the, the queuing as it exists now. And uh, we have, uh, just as, as further information, we have uh, worked with SMJ and talked to them. And uh, they are amenable to looking at any number of management techniques to deal with that. And uh, among them, probably the most uh, promising is, is a surcharge on tickets that would help, number one, defray the expenses as well as you know, generate the revenue necessary to offset the lack of that. And then it would be you know, anybody could come in, it would be under the control, there'd still be traffic control, but it'd be much less, and then we wouldn't have that queuing that is what's detaining people right now. I would also add there, there's, there's a lot of considerations, certainly, uh, to these. These are, these are very expensive. Uh, we did a, to, to fit in, for example, the lane from A Street requires shifting Kaczynski Fields to the south. It takes a half acre of trees that you know, certainly is going to be subject to uh, some discussion among many, many parties. Uh, it also shortens the uh, length of the right field fence, uh, which is of issue to American Legion baseball. And any of these are not deal breakers in and of themselves, but they certainly are significant. When we add all that together, that's about a $2 million project to provide these. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I expect most people here are familiar with the election and that there was money for this stadium on that, on the bond that failed. So we are facing the fiscal realities of dealing with that. Uh, so there's a lot of things in the mix. Uh, among other things, um, uh, foul balls hit out of Kaczynski three and four, um, you know, are going to land in, into these into the, this travel lane. And as a result of uh, determination by Land and Water Conservation Fund, 
this needs to be open uh, for all facilities. We can't close that off. That then complicates things because if we need this, then we need an access lane. If it's open all the time, then that roadway needs a dedicated access lane on A Street. That is compromised by the fact we got a bridge there and we could certainly make it work, but it's not an easy solution. I mean, it, it's kind of the mass of all these things working together that really complicates this. And the relative return that we would get recognizing that through management and by, by better layout of the parking, we can achieve uh, probably about 90, 95% of what we're trying to achieve and it's questionable whether those other, the A, A Street as well as the Gamble Street exit are going to give us the return we're really looking for because the limitation is still the number of lanes available that DOT will give us on A Street and Gamble. Uh, don't know if there are any other questions. Yes, we have more questions. Uh, Commissioner uh, Jerry. Winchester. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. So I just want to follow up so I kind of clearly understand this. You basically took out the additional road that went to A Street as a reason that was proposed earlier. And the, when you emphasize the fact that we're limited by the number of lanes exiting the piece of property, I understand that, but this would have added at least one or two lanes of exit capacity, not? It, uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Winchester, it does not add, there was currently, like tonight, there's an ACES game. When they exit on A Street, they will exit from 16th Avenue, westbound and northbound, into two lanes. Correct. Under this scenario, if we were to use this new access as an exit, we still end up with two lanes in A Street. That's all we have. So if we take, in this very short distance, traffic that would exit from the south side of these lots, throw them onto A Street, that ends up being a dedicated lane. And when they get then to 16th Avenue, all that's available is one additional lane. So we only end up with two lanes regardless of the scenario. This same situation exists, exists on Gamble. Right now, there is one exiting from 16th eastbound to head south, and there is one lane exiting from the eastern lots to Gamble heading south. So there are two lanes available on Gamble. If we were to provide this new lane, we still end up with two lanes we can use. So it doesn't matter where we put it or how many, everybody's dumping into two lanes. And that is a, a constraint. Additional on Gamble is another complicating factor that DOT is not satisfied with that, that merge distance because it compromises access to Cal Worthington, which stays open till midnight. And so that's another issue that we would have to worry about. And I can assure you that Cal Worthington is not going to be sympathetic. And uh, that's, that's yet another issue that, that complicates this thing. It's not clean, simply. But regardless, to answer Commissioner Winchester's question, we have two lanes on A Street, two lanes in Gamble. That's all we have to work with, regardless how many exits we provide from this parking lot. Thank you. And um, there, the second question I had was, in the, the new large parking lot, you added the, the sort of middle row out. Was that added? or was, I don't remember that being there on the first through the chair, Commissioner uh, Winchester. Yes, that, that was there. It, it wasn't as detailed as it is. Uh, one thing I would add, you, you've got two conditions, number two and I think nine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and you can leave those co conditions in if you'd like, but there is some confusion as to whether these are at uh, parking lot level or, and it, it there is an interpretation, I think, by staff in the, the traffic area that those are at grade. Those have a what's called a barrier curve, a, a vertical separation of six inches. So there is separation there. And so the pedestrians are protected from cars that park in there. Also the vegetation that was likewise protected. And so that whole area is 
uh, isolated by six inch barrier curb. The uh, drainage all moves from north to south. And so that barrier curb that provides uh, for, uh, if you look at the, the new drawings, for example, that, that does flip because we have the landscaping on the uphill side of that median so that it receives the water that's flowing from north to south. And the sidewalk is now on the south side and on the, the other pedestrian circulation, again, the landscaping's on the south so that that water can go into beehive inlets which then go into infiltration chambers. So uh, one thing that we're very sensitive to is meeting the, the Chester Creek Watershed Plan and making sure that we, we meet the requirements of that as well as all the many other water quality requirements that are levied on any development. Thank you. Um, one other question I had is, the, the discussion, and I guess I was trying to clarify Mr. Sawhill's question, that that horizontal walkway on your new parking lot, the, the reason it was not continued all the way over to the Sullivan Arena was? The, uh, just as a point of history, this, this project at its inception did not even include Mulcahy Stadium. It was supposed to be west of the existing Mulcahy, and Mulcahy Stadium wasn't even part of this project. Uh, the problem is then we have even more people walking by Mulcahy Stadium and all those exits that move to the north complicating, I mean, you'd never get out of that lot because of all the literally hundreds of people that would be using 16th Avenue to get to this lot. Uh, American Legion Baseball has long wanted to improve Mulcahy and said, you know, this, if, if we're ever going to do this, now's the time to think about this and agreed to what you have roughly before you. And so as a result of that, Mulcahy moved to the west, opening up the existing Mulcahy site to be utilized as a parking lot. So that was the original project. And so what you see, if you were to look at... Um, the, the drawing set, um, probably the best uh, 101 or 10, L101, 102. Actually, L100 is a real good drawing. It looks like this. And in fact, let me just get. So if you look at this graphic, what you see, the gray shaded area, is the area that where all the ground's going to be torn up because that's the site of the existing Mulcahy Stadium and that whole thing's being redesigned. So that's as, as far as, and it is actually an extension of what the project was, uh, and, but that's what we need to do to accommodate basically what was being torn up and what the opportunities were. So we aren't touching anything south of that, and we are not touching anything uh, east of that with respect to ripping up the ground, replacing the material that's there, rebuilding. We are not rebuilding those lots. Now to the south, we can't really get down there, but the concern of the commission at our last, our first meeting was that we weren't touching that, but the problem was all this very carefully considered pedestrian traffic that was moving from west to east to get to the Sullivan Arena now ended up in a parking lot where everything was oriented north-south and, and the direction of the commission was fix that, make sure everybody's moving east-west. So in essence, all we're doing is we're gonna go in there, we're gonna seal coat it and throw down some new lines so everybody's moving east-west. And I think, are we redoing that lighting also in there? And we're redoing the lighting so it corresponds with the drive aisles and parking aisles. So that's what we're doing. I mean, it, it certainly stretches the project. I mean, we stretch the project, stretch the project, and stretch the project, but in, in short, uh, we, we at least are addressing at a surface level the reorganizing of that parking so that at a point at which we can improve that, that we can do that. 
Thank you. That explains some things because I was trying to remember exactly what we did there as well. Um, I, I do see that over in the gamble access, we're adding some vegetation, some things over there, and and I guess it just, you know, it's it's like two rows of parking right straight across that Mulcahy. It seems like putting that that pedestrian aisle, even if it didn't have landscaping on it across there so all of those people could find their way to a pedestrian aisle and keep going to the to the Sullivan Arena is going to be something you're going to want to do. And I do understand, I mean, people sort of filter in from all directions, but when people are coming in or leaving and cars are trying to get through the, the driveways, it seems like having a one spine through the middle of that that the pedestrian at least can get to and be safe would be a, an appropriate. And, and I, I'm just wondering, is that really that much of it to take that one section and, and, and take it all the way to Sullivan? Yeah, if it were a simple matter of ripping up asphalt, planting some trees and putting in sidewalk, that would be one thing. But the reality is once we open that and once we alter that parking lot, to a, uh, I would say a significant degree, it opens that whole thing up to uh, having to meet Title 21 standards. None of this parking right now is within a shadow of Title 21. It, all those requirements that we levy on every private developer in town, this thing isn't even within a prayer of, of a bad idea with respect to that. So. What we're doing is, is, is very aggressive with respect to making sure that everything complies with that. And, uh, and again, we have stretched that. To, to redo that then opens that whole uh, parking lot up to compliance with Title 21 very possibly. So that's, that's one issue. Also, we're using the landscape to deal with water quality. Right now, all that water drains into some uh, either sheet drains into sheet, sheet, uh, into the creek without any treatment whatsoever or in, a, in an even worse basis, it goes into some, some lines, some storm drain lines, m many of which are uh, about, only offer about 30, 40 percent of their capacity. And so all that that, you know, getting into that, then we have to deal with the drainage, we have to deal with the subsurface material. It it simply expands that to a point that the, the, the prayer of ever getting any piece of this project built becomes even less likely than the challenge we already face. Understood. I, yeah. I can appreciate that. I did, thank you for that yeah, thank very you. complete explanation. It would lose 30 parking spaces, but even if you just striped it and said that's pedestrian and didn't change anything, just X'd it across all the way across those parking lots and said that 30 spaces is for pedestrians to get mm -hmm. through there is a possibility? I mean, yes, is that, that something that... Folks through the chair, um, Commissioner Winchester, yes, that is. Yeah, because it, it just seems to me you got this huge, new, beautiful parking lot and now you're just telling everybody, okay, find your way through those cars, <laughs> even though we've lined it up better, and I really appreciate that you took that comment you know, to task and said, hey, yeah, you're right. Let's orientate this and at least make those improvements. Uh, but I'm kind of with Mr. Saga. I think that's what your point was. Right. And I'm, I'm kind of supporting that uh, okay. because I think the pedestrian needs at least one point of safe haven across there. <laughs> Understood. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Joel Condom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Adams, how long has Stantec been on this project? The, uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Conant, uh, Stantec, formerly USKH, uh, first did a traffic study back in 2005 6 under a uh, project that I was a project manager on, which was the master plan for all of the Chester Creek Sports Center. And it didn't focus on parking, it was really focused on a larger plan looking at uh, all the lands that are Land and Water Conservation Fund, Binboki, the future of it, the possibilities of expanding Sullivan Arena architecturally. It, it was a very long overarching study. So part of it was uh, uh, a traffic study, but 
that study was really had a different focus than, than what Mr. Will Webb most recently completed. So they did that in 2005, 2006. This current project, and it, nothing had happened until this current project, which is now about two years old. So Stantec has been involved in this for, uh, what, 10 years now? Almost. Well, and, was... you know, you say that, well, you know, they didn't focus on traffic, mm -hmm. they, but they did a little bit. Uh, I'm just curious as to, you know, why at this sort of late hour we get this final report from Stantec that definitively says the problem with uh, the ingress egress has to do with the ticketing mechanism and the lanes. Well, we had a lot of discussion about you know various alternatives to traffic flow. Uh, how many did we have? Three different alternatives. Um, and now, all of a sudden, all of that discussion gets blown out of the water because of this final report from a company that's been working on this project for 10 years. All of a sudden, there's this epiphany that no matter how many roads we put from A Street to Gamble, it will make no difference. Why was that even part of an alternative that we looked at last time around? Okay, so enough of that. Uh, the issue seems to come down to this ingress, egress, the ticketing mechanism, the ticketing process, the, you know, the toll process, and uh, the lanes that are available for egress from the lot. Okay. So if we disregard the fact that, uh, you know, we wasted our time last time looking at these alternatives that fundamentally had no chance of ever going anywhere, now we're down to the nitty-gritty. And what I'm wondering is, has any effort been put into looking at different types of toll mechanisms? Like, you know, Massachusetts has the Fast Pass, uh, the Bay Bridge, San Francisco, another electronic kind of mechanism that allows traffic to just roll through without having to stop and, you know, fiddle around with nickels and dimes. Has any effort been put into that? Now that it's been determined definitively that that's our problem, it seems that that's where our focus should be. How are we going to fix this whole process? How can we bring the latest and greatest in uh, you know, toll processing uh, technology to, you know, this, this uh, site. And then moving on to uh, egress from the site, you say, ah, oh, we've only, we've got limited access. We've got only two lanes on A Street. We've only got two lanes on uh, Gamble. Well, what about the idea of let's just shift the whole Mulcahy eastward, put an, an access lane on A Street, so an emerging lane that would help to uh, guide traffic into A Street. Why not enlarge the access lane from uh, 16th at Gamble? Why not enlarge that from one lane of, uh, you know, access traffic to more lanes? It seems that this is where the focus needs to be now that we've determined me, where the problem is. Could we have more study into solving these problems rather than just say, ah, you know, the problem, there's nothing we can do. Because what, the way I see it, we've got a status quo situation where the same problems along 16th Avenue are still there. And very little has been done to ameliorate these issues. Uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Connell, let me, there were two points I think that you hit on there at the end. Uh, and um, uh, while yes, the, the project in, has to some degree had a life of 10 years, it's only been active for about four of those. So uh, we, with respect to the study, we did one study that was probably a three or four month study back in 2005. Uh, and then uh, with respect to a study now, this is the only study that USKH has been done, the one that is in your packet, this, this guy here. Uh, and within that, 
to get to your question, which you really a actually answered, is ticketing toll has to be addressed. How are you going to do that? And we've, what we've now done is we've circled around and finally said, okay, well, this is the problem. To that extent, to resolve that, uh, Mr. Rada, Parks and Recreation, who can ad address this if you, if you wish, uh, he, he's responsible for all these many recreation facilities in town. All these are governed by agreements, and all, the, there are, all these have many multiple parties, and the parties that are involved are Sullivan Management Group at the present, uh, Parks and Recreation, the police have to be involved, DOT has to be involved, uh, which we'll get to your, your second question here in a minute, not to mention traffic. So all these parties have to, to work together. So out of all this, uh, with respect to dealing with this traffic problem, we probably spent a, a grand total of about three or four months actually working on the traffic problem. And the, the vagaries of consultant work, be it architecture or engineering, is takes a long time to work these, especially if there are multiple parties involved. And we're finally at the point that you say we need to be. And that is, how are we going to deal with that? We've taken that initial step, of, among other things, of, of asking Land and Water Conservation Fund of exactly what does your, your land ownership mean. And so that will get to your second question that I'll answer in a minute. But uh, we now are at the point that we have initiated that initial meeting, which we have completed, that we have explored a, uh, three or four different options. And from that, uh, the option that seems preferable at the moment is looking at a surcharge to address this. And it's first come, first serve when you get in the parking, get people in there, but a surcharge and just get rid of all the money taking and uh, the bookkeeping, the extra staff and the administration and the agreements that are required with all the many other systems. And John, is there anything to add beyond that? Uh, my name is John Rod. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director <clears throat> um, through the Chair, uh, Commissioner Condon. Um, Chester Creek Sports Complex is a rather uh, dynamic um, situation, and it is um, seasonal as well as event-driven. Uh, it takes a tremendous amount of cooperation and coordination amongst multiple parties, uh, whether it be Parks and Recreation, SMG, who is the management uh, agreement for the facilities in the area, meaning Ben Bokey and Sullivan Arena, uh, working with the Bucks and the Pilots, working with DOT, working with the Traffic Department, working with APD. Um, there are multiple aspects of your question. Um, to probably answer it best, um, with restricted parking, uh, we've had to deal with for years, you know, since uh, February 7th of 83 when the Sullivan Arena opened. Um, ever since then, it's just been, it's, it's been a fight, a battle. Uh, large events, small events, medium-sized events, multiple events, crossover traffic, um, scheduling functions. We learned over time that it is uh, much easier to sit down at the beginning of the year or even a couple years in advance and come up with a matrix basically says, this special event can't occur here because you've already got two overlapping events here. And then you've got the seasons on top of that. A um, good example would be uh, having the color run, which was going to be right on top of the women's run. Well, you can't put 25,000 people down there all at the same time. Um, you can't do a 4th of July function and have multiple events going on at other facilities. So the point being, the, the concept of having a uh, automated plan um, actually is a little bit more complicated because at a maximum capacity, Dwayne Adams is a season ticket holder for the Aces, uh, if you took every season ticket holder and every public person who wants access to the lot and you go to an automated system, maybe your pre-pass system, like a Nexus, uh, you know, going through fast lanes, et cetera, uh, you've now created a situation potentially where not everybody can get in because we still have a capacity issue. We cannot, at a max night, an Elton John concert, an Aces playoff game, you know, we're not going to satisfy them. We're going to set ourselves up for other issues. We are actually looking at, though, something would be uh, a hybrid, and, and, um, and this conversation has occurred with SMG. Uh, but we do need to bring traffic into it. APD's got to come into it. Um, the long-range plan, your, your point is very well taken. It's a great idea, but we're not there yet because we don't have the total parking 
uh, capacity finally approved, that's going to be the new beginning for that kind of a dialogue. And that will enable us then to determine both from a human resource standpoint how we manage uh, the access into the property as well as how many spaces and can we go to some sort of a system that allows for a pass on a window, a pass on a bumper, something that's recognized so that on a prepayment basis um, people can have that access. It might be limited, it might be a lot. We don't know the answer yet. But your point is very well taken. We're just not there at that point. We need to define how many parking spaces we're going to have, and that gives us a new benchmark to actually do the analysis and figure out how to work with the parties, the players, and the multiple users within the complex so we do the right thing and come up with the right answer as best we can. I hope that helps. So this isn't the right number of parking places that I'm looking at here on the site plan? I thought we determined that you do have the number Part, of parking places. Through the chair, Mr. Conan, poor choice of words. Whatever we have to work with, that's, that's what it is. I mean, we can't get any more parking than what we have. And so whatever that final number is, um, that's going to be the driving force for how we come up with a system that hopefully allows for a better uh, flow, access, efficiencies, et cetera. Huh. So this is still under consideration depending on, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure what it's depending on. It seems like we have a count at this point. You're proposing a set number of parking places, and now can't we have a system proposed that would accommodate this number of parking places that I see on my site plan here? Uh, through the chair, Mr. Condon, um, upon approval, uh, that allows us, uh, discussions have started. Huh. Okay, the discussions have started. I've already talked to SMG at length about this. We collectively have talked with them. We had a very large gathering over at Public Works here a couple months ago, um, probably 20 people in the room, including DOT, including the traffic department, uh, APD representatives. So, you know, they've all got to enter the mix Sure. With, with some known uh, final numbers and layouts, uh, you, uh, Mr. Sawhill brought up um, the question of extending the pathway, for example. Uh, any little bits and pieces, whatever we finally come up with for the final plan and solution, that's going to be the starting point. So um, with, your, with your approval, what we're trying to gain here is, is a new measurement that allows us to literally sit down at a 30,000-foot view and say, okay, this is the flow, these are the exceptions, this is what we have to work with, how do we solve this together? But the dialogue has started. Hmm. So could this be like a two-phase project where we approve this phase, but you know, then there's another issue of how you're solving the fundamental issues? The fundamental issues are still going to be driven because the requirements under the contract or the management agreement with SMG, um, there are requirements for the traffic plans for every event of any size. Uh, there's an APD condition that goes into the number of officers you have to have. Um, there's going to be stations there with the final plan, the way it's laid out. Uh, where your ticket takers or non-ticket takers may be, what's a fast lane versus another lane. I mean, I don't have the answer for you right now, but the point being is everybody understands that there's got to be a better way um, with this plan, and that's what we have to roll up our sleeves and, and uh, delve into. Okay, good. Thanks. All right, thank you. Do we have any additional questions? Madam Chair, if I may, uh, yeah, I, Mr. Condon did have another question that remains unanswered. Okay. It, I, the egress issue. Correct. And the, the question just for the commission's benefit was, can you take land that, that is on property and use that to establish another lane? Uh, there, there's a number of issues that complicate that. First of all, if you were headed northbound, for example, there's a bridge. That bridge is of a certain size. And that lane, that deceleration lane, needs to extend south beyond that. So that's one complication. There's a creek involved. There's utilities in that right of way. Uh, also, as far as providing additional lanes to the north for egress, there is a need 
that's not on our property. That's private development owned by many, many different parties and their built structures, residential structures to the north. And that, that also is needed. So that's on that side. On Gamble, it's even worse. Uh, there's uh, certainly a, a long culvert, but there's private property that prevents us egress, egress traffic from being in a yet another dedicated lane because that would be right across the front of Cal Worthington, not to mention there's high voltage lanes and a number of other utilities in there. So it's uh, additionally, if we said, okay, let's take them north of uh, Sullivan Arena and bring them down that roadway, Sullivan Arena and its, its delivery vehicles as they try to get in there for events, they have maxed out use of that space. Uh, and so there's, there's not the ability to dedicate land. It's, this, it doesn't even speak to the issue of Land and Water Conservation Fund. And a lot of Land and Water Conservation Fund is, is uh, land that was dedicated and procured, but part of that agreement to take money to procure that land is that that land cannot be converted to non-park use. And tra transportation, the specific reason that, that, that those clauses are in uh, the, uh, the legislation that provided that is because across the country, parks were being used at, for conversion into transportation. It was devastating parkland. So that's a political issue that even complicates that further. So that's the answer to that question. Sure. And I understand. But the way I see it, if we had a road that went uh, south of Mulcahy, you know, you had an alternative that looked at that that's now off the table. If we had access onto A Street, uh, there is a strip of land there that is, uh, you know, part of, yes, along there. Could that be dedicated to uh, an access lane onto A Street and, you know, allow traffic to merge? Uh, for egress from the site and also, you know, essentially access to the site. Yeah, I know it would mean shifting the whole stadium to the east to make room for the road, and nobody wants to go through redesign again, but, and it seems like there's enough space between Gamble and um, the Sullivan Arena that somehow the roadway could be enlarged there to provide for uh, you know, access to the site and egress from the site that would, you know, help to relieve the kind of congestion that happens along 16th. Uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Conan, uh, even if, if, if this lane that, uh, that we had shown our previous edition were, were provided in a lane dedicated in here, that traffic as it moves north and tries to accelerate has to move left. It has to move into the other lanes. Mm -hmm. So coming out of 16th, there are two lanes dedicated to that, to traffic coming from 16th and moving north. And there, that would continue under the plan that we have before us now. If this traffic is over in this lane, that lane then, uh, that traffic would be required to have moved into the third and only through traffic lane that exists on that road which greatly complicates that, and DOT's not going to buy but that. But could egress essentially be routed to the south along a southern road that then gets onto A Street? What I'm seeing is that uh, there are possibilities, and I don't see any study in front of me that would say this has been carefully considered. All I see is a study that says all these other alternatives are now off the table because we have these two issues of you know, involving access and egress, and therefore, you know, we don't have any other alternatives. Uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Conan, we did look at that. Uh, the, the big issue is conversion of use, uh, putting roadway through uh, a buffer and a green belt that offers as a filtering mechanism for the treatment of water before it gets to Chester Creek. That was an issue. Uh, the, even if we routed it south of Chester Creek, or uh, we still got to get across that bridge, there's still a constraining element. That We did look at those alternatives. There is a right-of-way, actually, that is located well south of this map that is a dedicated right-of-way. Uh, even if we put to get to that right-of-way, though, uh, we, we've got to go through parkland, and uh, not only that, 
there is still what I would suggest is insurmountable possibility of gaining acceptance to put another bridge across Chester Creek to a accommodate that. Uh, it's, it is labyrinthian in its complexity, and we didn't see that any of those alternatives, and we did look at those, we did not find them viable. Okay, thanks. Uh, Commissioner Ed Danielli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this has been good dialogue. Hello, Mr. Adams. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Leonetti. I have um, a laundry list of questions here, if that's any surprise. And, and unfortunately, some of them have not been answered. And so I'm going to start at the 30,000 foot level and then go down to the treetops. Um, so the, there was a public process that the whole every document in here talks about, and it discusses that it happened. Um, the most recent dates are 2013 and prior. Um, so that process goes through. There's a DSR that happens. The public sees what's going on. Um, we review it once. They see we see the same thing they see, and then there's a not two non-public hearings, and then things change, and. Um, it's to my interpretation that the change is not in um, kind with what the general public has already seen. Now, granted, somebody could walk in here and look at this exact presentation and, and learn it. But um, the question that I have is um, why or, or what did I miss in the narrative that would explain to the general public the reasons for changing? Uh, to the Chair, Commissioner Leonetti, first of all, those public meetings and those drawings that we took to the public meetings did not include that southern access, which I think is what you're getting to. That southern access was something that was requested by this commission as part of your deliberation at a meeting, and you requested that we put that in there. I thought that there was a drawing in that previous. You're, I believe you're, you may be referring to the 2006 plan. Is Mr. that possible? Yes, sir, Mr. Sawhill. It, it was uh, alternative number six in your DSR. Which was the previous right. meeting. Which was when we brought that to this commission and it became clear. If you remember, we met with this commission twice and it became clear that there was no way that that was going to be accepted unless by this commission, unless that was considered a viable alternative. We came back then with that as a viable alternative. So there was no public discussion of that until this commission raised that issue. Okay. So the public is not disappointed by any of this. I, I can assure you that was commission, this commission and there have been no public meetings since then. Okay. Thank you. Um, could you, so, so I think this, the strategy for this, I understand, I think I understand the strategy for this submittal from the previous one. What's not clear you know, you, you can have a DSR that has everything under the sun, and then you can come back to us and you can say, okay, everything under the sun's right here. We don't think part of that's gonna work, um, but we're gonna do this, and it doesn't include all of this. And, you know, right or wrong, we'll figure out if that's gonna happen or not, but what's not clear is what is actually gonna be constructed on what we're approving. There's some numbers thrown around for 5 million, 5.2 million, 19 million. So I remember in the previous meetings, there was a lot of, or there was some reliance on the parking being part of the initial construction because of some legislative grants, I believe. So I would just like clarity on what is being constructed in the time frame it's being constructed under. Uh, to the Chair, Ms. Leonetti, um, it's not a simple answer because we don't know is, is that's the simple answer, I guess. Uh, you know that the bond didn't pass. So yeah. that was that was a source of revenue we were expecting. Uh, we have a pending request before the legislature. Uh, we also have uh, parties who have the ability to raise money or have demonstrated the ability to raise money in the past. Uh, how short are we right now? Round numbers, nine and a half, ten million. 10 million round numbers. So, uh, so will that come from the legislature? You read the newspapers. Uh, you know, will it come from the bond? No, it won't come from the bond. There was a little money. 
uh, to do a little bit of work in the Parks and Recreation bond and in, in the, road bond, the road bond on 16th. So the parking lot, a good portion of the parking lot can be funded, but it depends on the moving of the, the stadium. That's so where my it, comes in. You, you get the picture is we don't know uh, because it's a moving target. Um, there's there's all sorts of possibilities. If this doesn't fly, uh, is is it possible there's a sugar daddy named Alaska Airlines or Wells Fargo or so? You know, it's possible. I, in all honesty, John Rada is a lot closer to the money issue and phasing than I am, and I'd like him to talk about that. Okay, thanks. Just general terms like parking first, and then you know, the stadiums move. Through, stadiums through move. the commissioner, uh, Mr. Leonetti. Um, where would you like me to start? Just the phase one through five or ten or whatever it is. Um, let's talk about the money first. That'll help you understand it. Um, this proposal um, is conditional to uh, roughly $19 million. Uh, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, we're currently in the CAPSA system for the state uh, capital budget to, for $9,995,000. Um, that is a key piece for the stadium component. Um, the other funds have been generated through other state grants, through bonds, uh, currently, the Parks and Rec bond passed, the other bond did not, so we're going to be short-funded somewhat. To put it in perspective, um, everything is conditional around a funding package, and the funding package is, is lynched on $10 million. Okay? Uh, what would occur, typically, in the, in the phasing of this project is, if you take this top-down view and you look at the two North Kosinski fields, which are going to be removed, they go first. Okay, and then you've got a demo, Mulcahy, and then you can start on the parking as you begin to then construct the new Mulcahy Stadium, and then completion would occur. So the first phase is you've got to remove what the impediments are, which are two fields, and then we can go ahead and transition, but we've got to do this in a sequence that is not totally disruptive to the seasonal use of the entire complex. So we're trying to take into account, and similar to my comments to Mr. Condon, you know, all of this is, is multiple moving parts and pieces, um, some going opposite directions at the same time, but coming back to meet. And so it's, it's not a simple equation to say X, Y, and Z equals, but it is conditional about the funding, and the funding then drives what our first steps are. Um, parking is going to be... In this particular case, as a hypothetical, I'll just use that because sometimes things change as well, is going to be the third phase because you've got to get rid of the fields and move the ballpark before you can start the parking. So that's, does that help a yep. little bit? Yep, it does. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is about the parking spaces. Like any... Um, person who would build in this town, you, you, it doesn't matter the size of the lot you have, if you don't have enough parking, you don't get a building permit. So I'm curious how um, the, I, I wrote some numbers down here, 3,226 spaces are required and there's 1,865. I read that there's going to be a potential um, parking garage across the street, but that's all speculative now. So I'm really curious how the city can propose a project to meet code and go through and get building permits and actually be constructed if there's not enough parking on the site? Well, I, uh, to the chair, Mr. Leonetti, that, that's an interesting question, actually. Um, you know, and kind of goes back all the way to the, I guess we would need to do a little research on the initial building permit for the Sullivan Arena, perhaps. Uh, the... Um, the reality is uh, we studied this in 2006, as you well know, uh, and, you know, what, that was the question. And uh, from that arrived at, well, this is if, every, you know, what, what's the formula? Every, you know, does everything in here require its own number? And if so, as this says, that would be 4463. And we said, okay, well, let's, you know, let's look at, uh, you know, building the, let's just build the church for Easter Sunday 
use something topical, I guess. And we said, well, that's 3226. The, the real reality is if all these things were used in a worst case basis, and we went and did an analysis in 2005, six of what sort of a situation generates the big demand. And that would, we, there were about, I think, eight different occasions. Uh, you know, there was graduation or, or happening the same day as a tournament of Ben Bokey, soccer players at Anchorage Football Stadium and uh, uh, Anchor or uh, Mulcahy Stadium was in use. So that was one of the, you know, the big event. You know, we had something like that. And that, that's how we got to 3226. Well, you know, do you do you build it for that? I mean, this is also, yeah, your question is, but we demand that of developers. Well, we also know what kind of lot we get when we build something that, that meets all the demands of what was Kmart and is, is now there at between New Seward and Old Seward, South of Diamond, right? So, well, we, you know, what is the right number? Well, it doesn't matter to a great degree because if we take all the facilities that are available and look at the footprint that's left and cram it as full of parking, recognizing snow storage requirements, recognizing landscape requirements, what can we do? And that's what we're doing. So the simple answer is we're moving to compliance. And most per permitting agencies would say, well, if you're moving to compliance and you're meeting the public good, we'll give you a building permit. And that's kind of the history and that's what we're doing. Okay, thank you. Um, on the topic of the people taking tickets, I am on the same wavelength as Mr. Condon that you know you have a design problem in front of you or us, and I understand what Mr. Rada said. Um, it seems like the chosen path is a path, whether it be the most efficient use of land or the efficient, most efficient use of bringing in people, um, I think is debatable. But one thing that is intriguing to me and somewhat shocking is that if you look at the west drive lane of the new parking, it is half the distance between A Street and the existing drive lane. And that's in some of the scenarios where the ticket spitters or ticket people were going. So you have 30% more people standing there and half the queuing space and somehow that works. Okay, I get it. That, I don't agree with it, but I understand the thought process there. The next question is, is there a queuing issue if there are no there's nobody taking tickets. The, uh, I believe there was only one question. Is, is that correct? Uh, if, if no one's uh, taking tickets, Will Webb, could you address this? You, uh, Will Webb did the study and, and stood there and watched and measured this. So Thank he's you. the right guy to answer this. Hi, hi, I'm uh, Will Webb with Stantec. Uh, do the traffic engineering for the project. Um, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Linetti, uh, without the ticket takers are the bottleneck for the operation, as you've seen from the report. Um, the 12 point uh, whatever seconds it was for them to take the uh, folks' money and return the ticket and the, the change is, is the problem. So if we eliminated that problem either through a parking surcharge where folks don't have to pay directly for parking or some other scheme, um, then that bottleneck goes away. We, there's always going to be some sort of a bottleneck, but if we remove the ticket taking, then we can have two lanes going directly into the site um, that would be directed to parking stalls as they are now, uh, presumably in free flow operation. So we've got one lane from A Street feeding into two lanes onto the site. There should be no, um, there should be no bottlenecks at that point, no, no queuing really. Okay, thank you. So that goes on to the condition number Correction, advisory comment, number one, which was from the traffic engineer, or 
MOA traffic revision that says additional resources will be required when the traffic control plans are updated to account for the proposed site modifications. These additional resources, extra cashiers, prepaid parking, more flaggers, and possibly more police will require additional money for each special activity that occurs at the arena. So the solution to the ticket spitters and getting people onto the site quicker is going to cost the general public more money. And you guys are asking us to approve that tonight. No. Uh, through the chair, Commissioner Leonetti, um, not necessarily will it cost the public more money. Um, we're expanding the parking spaces. There's a driver, and that's going to be the standard ticket revenue that is associated with that. So you're going to increase the number of takers, but not proportionately to the number of spaces times the space cost, if you will, parking fee. And so um, we're not anticipating a huge increase, if any, at this point, because increasing the lot attendance for the collection of the funds as it currently exists is not going to exceed the amount of revenue comes from the additional parking spaces where now you've got more patrons coming to the facility. So we're not looking at an increase. What we may look at, getting back to, again, Mr. Condon's comments, there may be something if we go to a hybrid or a fully automated system, and I don't have the answer today, there may be uh, there may be a program cost. There may be something that has to do with um, scanners. I mean, I can't answer any of those things. Uh, that may be a cost, and that may become a surcharge per ticket over a certain period of time. And I liken it to what we did at the Anchorage Golf Course when we put in uh, the cart paths. There was a surcharge for a round of golf. When we replaced the floor at the Sullivan Arena back in the early 90s, there was a surcharge to pay for that. There may be a surcharge for a temporary period of time until those capital improvements or that IT investment is paid off, but that would be how it would be handled. So we're not anticipating going back to the public saying it's going to cost you more because, in fact, what we've got is a new source of revenue to offset what those other costs would be. So is it an accurate statement then, and the advisory comment should remain that additional resources will be required? Absolutely, they're going to be required. I fully recognize that, and so does SMG. They have a management agreement. They have a contract obligation to meet the standards as f set forth by the traffic engineer, APD, DOT, traffic controls. Those costs will be known, okay? And those will be incorporated, and we've already considered that mess with SMG. I've done that three times with them. Uh, we're, we're not scared of that at all. We're not looking at rate increases. We have to manage uh, the property well but we're not looking at trying to you know, pass on some extraneous cost to the public. We think we can manage that appropriately. Okay, on that same topic, um, how much of a headache would it cause if we condition no ticket, people standing there taking tickets? Would you rephrase that, please? How problematic or how much of a headache would it be for the city and the Parks Department and people at SMG if we were to make a condition that prohibited anybody to stand out there and collect tickets for parking? Be a non-revenue a non function? At any time. Because I see that as one problem. And this traffic study, it is what it is, um, identified one thing clearly, and that is that the people standing taking tickets is what slows people down, and that's what is queuing and causing people a headache. So if we eliminate that, and mm -hmm. per perhaps um, in our progressive thinking, we have some other method of collecting um, tickets, like the standalone ticket spitters, uh, as you see in the diamond parking lots, or whatever. I don't think the road ones are appropriate for your reasons that you said earlier. But I do recognize that it's identified in the report that these guys slow down traffic. So let's eliminate them. Let's have them collect the tickets in some other fashion. It'd be uh, very difficult for me to try and answer that question without having a very broad discussion with all the players, including the administration, uh, whether it's current or the next administration. Um, there's a management agreement has contractual obligations that's spelled out in there. There's relationships already existing. Um, I would say 
uh, I would be cautious about doing something like that um, because I'm not sure that that is achievable without having some pretty serious dynamics put on the table, and I don't know how to answer that at all. That won't be driven by me, I can guarantee it. So it would be something that you would prefer not to consider? I would not consider it at this time. I think the right move um, is to look at what, um, and I'll date myself a little bit, um, because I've been involved with the facilities here for a long time, um, going back to being the original manager at Ben Bokey. So I'm pretty familiar with the area, um, I'm pretty passionate about what I do. Um, I talk to user groups all the time. I try to listen to their concerns. Um, I'm going to veer off, if you don't mind, slightly. You talked about 3,000 plus spaces. Uh, you don't need 3,000 spaces. That goes back to the uh, comments again. We coordinate in a very um, uniform way functions within the complex scheduling of Mulcahy, scheduling of the football stadium. We recognize large events, small events, what can happen at the same time, uh, what can't. So we've taken those things into account. Um, this expanded parking gives us a, a much better opportunity to serve the public, just generally. We know that. I've known it from Bokey days to being at Sullivan Arena when it opened to everything else that I do, multiple hats, whatever. The whole thing really revolves around at this point, unless some other condition changes and you make it a free ride or it's automated or whatever it might be. Um, we have the ability now to transform the problem into something that is more manageable, efficient, and more of a solution based on what is being proposed by utilizing and expanding. And SMG is on board with this. They know it's coming. Um, they recognize, and Stephanie Mormillo, with some of the comments that are in there, recognize that the human element has really been part of the issue. But you have to cover your costs. You can't bring more people on if you don't have more parking because that affects the relationship and the contract and all those other things. And it's, it's complicated. I, that's the easy answer. Um, but this gives us an avenue to bring in more ticket takers at multiple openings and actually um, ease that pain, if you will, where people have complained, and, and I've seen it, I've been there, I've lived it, um, of trying to bring people onto the site. This actually is very solution driven without complicating uh, the equation even more when you get into moving ballparks and, and bike paths and LWCF issues and things that would just probably kill the project. For, for quite a while. So um, I, I think this really is solution driven. Um, I don't have the answers to all your questions right now, but listening to the dialogue, listening to some of the things um, across the board that I've heard tonight, um, I think we're on the right path, um, and I think we're going to end up at the right result, but there's still more change to follow once it's in place, and everybody's willing to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, another couple of questions, and then I'll turn off my mic. On page 32 of the traffic analysis, it says implementation of the above ref, uh, recommendations requires changes to the preferred alternative identified in the DSR. So this is a process question. So if we approve this tonight, we're approving a plan that was not approved in the DSR, which has pretty easy bounds for um, somebody to contest it and has legal right to say that's not right. So how does that work with your guys' proposal? Well, I, I, a DSR is a, is a design study. Right, it's right? essentially the master plan, right? Or we could no. be the master plan. I mean, where's the master plan that shows this is the preferred alternative? There is well, no a master plan is not a design document, it's a planning document. Right. Planning and design are not linear processes. We like to think of them as a linear process, but they're not. You basically go through it one time and you come up with the best idea. You go through it again and you come up and refine that as you go. Uh, there's not a project that hasn't been here that doesn't go through iterative decision-making loops right. to get to a refined decision. I agree. I and that's where we are. Let me let uh, Dean said it address well, this. I'm going to let you address oh, it. I'm going to, to address this, but I'm going to be reminded of something. 
the commission take your time. Left with us on the study and evaluate the right. yeah. So, uh, Mr. Siddham does make a good point that, that this study was mandated by this body. Right. Right. And so, in response to a body coming up with a solution that addresses the condition of approval, does not negate a design study report. It supplements it and adds to it and clarifies it and I think resolves issues that were identified, but it does not remove the design study report as, a, as part of the process. But it's an iterative process and as we're getting to a decision and coming up with a solution, this is a component of that. So would you guys then, as it is written here, come back before us with a different DSR or just update it and move on? The DSR was a point in time we've moved beyond that. It just says it should be updated. That's the only reason why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> this traffic study. It, a condition of approval? Is that what you're suggesting? Or no, I, do, I don't understand I'm just the. I'm trying to clarify point. why this document, which we are all taking to consider it for this project, suggests updating the DSR and how that fits into the process we're in right now. Perhaps uh, it should be stricken, we have specific and we should move on. So what we're recommending in here uh, requires changes to the preferred alternative identified in the DSR. So no, I'm good. Yeah. Um, through the chair, Mr. Leone, let me read what this says. Implementation of the above recommendations requires changes to the preferred alternative identified in the DSR. It doesn't suggest that we need to rewrite the DSR. It's saying that that preferred alternative that we identify needs changes and that's what we've done. Okay. Cool. Just a couple more. We're going to move on to the treetop level. Um, I looked at the landscape plans. I think they're good. They, you guys did a good job. Um, the plant material is, I think, has year-round interest. Um, I don't want to uh, predicate, you know, I don't want to, I am under the impression that um, the landscape architects that come before this commissioner are um, competent designers, and I think that the plant material that comes here is is good. I just question the Deborah Maples not to remove them, but to just have a discussion on your success in the area. I've experienced some mediocre success, and it may be um, you guys have more knowledge that uh, you have more success on a different variety. Uh, to the chair, Ms. Leonetti, um, if you wanted to condition and say, uh, please consider varieties and ensure they are uh, hardy for their setting, we'd certainly look at that and determine whether the the record seems to do that. There are lots of examples where they've been successful, but you know we certainly will revisit that. If, if yeah, you no, I, to do I don't want to condition anything that says to. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, we'll we'll take that just under advisement, if you wish. Yeah, it's just discussion topic. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, the plant palette uh, seems kind of slim, and I was just curious if you guys were going to add more varieties after this or if this is what we're going to see. Uh, to the chair, Ms. Leonetti, this is what you see is what, what we're proposing right now. Uh, no addition. Uh, we're trying to stick with stuff, all of which is... Uh, hardy and and proven for relatively austere conditions. Uh, uh, we're also not looking for diversity within the campus that is Chester Creek Sports Center, but something that provides relatively a, a very simple and sedate environment to enhance wayfinding and, uh, you know, a, a linear row of uh, common vegetation we find does that in this kind of a situation better than providing a, something. If we had a place where people are lingering and, and uh, you know, demonstration of a different species and variety might, might add to that experience, that would be one thing. But when people arrive here, they're single directional with respect to what they're trying to do. And, you know, I guess our philosophy is keep it simple, keep it clean, stick to something. Yeah, good, I agree. And then they also fill in. You yeah. know, if one dies. Cool. Okay. So um, there's a comment from traffic. Back to traffic now. 
The landscape bed on the east parking. Traffic has a comment that talks about um, two comments. One is the ADA on the west, and um, the other is the planting island. So I know that this ADA island was a discussion topic at one of the meetings, and I was the one that brought up the topic, and Mr. Sawhill was kind and decided not to push the elements. And, you know, as I am learning, the um, I think this was the first meeting that I was at that I made that comment that uh, it might not be the best suggestion or solution, and that's what traffic is commenting on. And their comment is... Would this be on page three, condition seven, or their suggestion number seven? Is that the one specifically? Park space along major entrance site. Exiting may be problematic during peak events. Yes. Okay. Uh, to speak to that, uh, there, there's a, a couple thing. Uh, the ADA, you know, is, is mandated. We're going to meet ADA requirements with respect to exiting these parking stalls. Maybe pro problematic during peak events. Understand the, the throughout the the campus again, the periphery of the parking at specific venues, whether it be Benboki, uh, the Sullivan Arena, which has handicapped parking on both two sides. Uh, Mulcahy, which has handicapped parking under this proposal on one side. Uh, these facilities, uh, the parking is very key to those facilities. So if there's handicapped parking or if there's an event at Sullivan Arena, uh, there's no reason nor desire on the part of the, the, the disabled public to park over at Mulcahy in a handicapped spot, right? So they're very specific to the facility. Baseball events are very different from hockey events. Uh, among other things, you know, there's a limited number of people who attend relative to, to a hockey event, really a limited number of people. Uh, it's also uh, early in the evening. It, uh, these games start soon after work, and, and uh, if it's a doubleheader, maybe it goes late. But in all honesty, Depending on the game, people come, people go. It's it's much different from a, the the Alaska Aces, uh, and where the games everybody waits till the game's over and then everybody leaves within five minutes at the end of the game. It's very different. Baseball is a much more leisure activity. The sport is different, and the way spectators interact with the sport is different. So, leaving is is much less problematic than it is trying to leave. Uh, Sullivan Arena, uh, you know, and if, if it were that big a problem, you would do exactly what happens at Sullivan Arena, which is you back in, and that's what happens at Sullivan Arena. All the handicapped use backs in, and there's the ability to do that, but in all honesty, I don't think that's even a, a desire and issue because they don't exit, they don't leave, and they don't enter it the same, same way. It's a much different sport. So would you want to consider moving those spaces and having a curbside condition adjacent to the drive lane? Oh, that's where we started, but, right. that's you know. That's why I'm sticking my neck out here right um, now saying that. Your change. I know. We, that's where and we started. And it was a dialogue, and I'm learning that dialogues are not mandates, as the uh, document says. You know, we're comfortable with either one. They, they, they both work for us. Uh, so are you comfortable working with traffic to get it resolved after the fact? Because that's really what it brought what was brought to my attention was the traffic. If problem. you would care to condition it to resolve it with traffic, that would be fine with us. We, you know, we once we get direction from a commission, we'd like to yeah, stick that with that. Direction. But, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I leave that to the will of the commission. Yeah. That's for dialogue and... Uh... Yeah, not to suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? So, 
Joel is next. Okay. Uh, can we, uh, Commissioner Joel Cunham? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, do you have any additional questions? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. And I guess, uh, Jerry, you don't have any additional questions? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair and uh, Duane, it's been a lengthy discussion. I just want to thank you guys a lot for, you know, kind of indulging us through this. Um, one of the things I wanted to state is you're increasing the parking by 471 spaces effectively uh, and a parking area that was, you know, only 1,394 to start with. So, we, you, you know, it's almost a 30 percent, a third increase in parking, which is, it seems to me is going to make a substantial difference in this. And what, what appears to me that you're saying is we've, we've done the best we can with what we have and and, and with what can be made of this. And I was here when it was built, and we all said, gee, that's not a very good place to put a stadium. And then it got built there. Um, and, you know, I see you wiping your brow, and I remember the meetings. I was in them. Um, and, uh, and so this is an attempt to move in the right direction. And I think I just want to say, after all the kind of questions we've given you, thank you for persevering through what is a, one of the more complex sites I've ever encountered, and certainly I think the city of Anchorage has ever uh, created, and we created this, uh, and, and kind of getting to this point. So um, it's more of a comment than a question uh, to say that um, that's a 30 percent increase, and I wanted to just verify I was looking at the numbers right, uh, it appeared to me, and it, that's going to give you substantially more capability, uh, as Mr. Rada was saying, of managing the site and managing the parking and revenue potential, uh, assuming you can find a way to do tickets that makes a difference. You're suggesting that we not put any kind of condition on that, but there are advisory comments in here, and certainly you've heard the commission. Um, is there anything we can put in as a condition of approval that ensures that we are, are heard that that management of the ticket taking is, is, is implied by this approval? That there's going to be some real, I mean, in other words, I know you say you're doing it and I know it's going to happen and I really believe you, but, but as sort of representing the public over here, we sort of want to make sure that it happens. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm asking the question, is there anything we can say that doesn't keep you from doing and moving I forward? I, d I don't want to stop the project because I really applaud that this is happening. But at the same time, what can we say that will kind of go, okay, yes, we've got commission approval, but they're really strongly saying fix this ticket taking thing. Okay, to the commissioner, um, is that a question? Am I supposed to respond? Yeah, okay. Is, is there something we can <laughs> right. say that doesn't stop you but gives but puts some teeth in? Can, can you state your name for the record? I'm sorry, I'm John Rada. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do it in increments, if I may. Sure. Um, one of the things that's been discussed here, and, and I and I say this just because there's so much impact, um, positive impact to right. creating um, a parking environment as best we can make it. Yep. I mean, we, we, we have X amount of space and there's going to be X amount of spaces and it is what it is. Um, I think what's important to remember is that we're talking about the maximized use of the lot the maximized use of the lot is going to be very infrequent as opposed to the current parking total that's available. There's a, there's a really big change when you look at the overall use of the complex. What used to be a 25 or 30 event dynamic with a lot of conflict is now going to be reduced substantially. It's going to be reduced because how many maximum capacity events occur. Based that on will, having 471 more space. Exactly. It's a huge difference. That delta is massive when you look at the actual participation, common use, even joint or shared functionality of the complex at any given time 
okay, is going to drop dramatically. So, so sorry to interrupt you. Is there, a, is there a percentage there? I mean, can you say there was 50 events that we were really struggling with and now there's going to be 10? Um, my experience would probably tell you that um, uh, a high number would be 30. 30, okay. I'm going to tell you no. that now I'm going to tell you that uh, we'll probably have 10. And it's huge. I mean, I, I don't know how to um, graphically. That's good. I'm just looking for yeah. the order of magnitude. So we're taking we're, basically a two-thirds reduction of absolutely. the that are going to create an issue. Exactly. That's, okay. and, and that's, I mean, that's just based on what's going on. But to get back to your question, um, I appreciate all the comments tonight. Um, I don't think you, well, I'm sure you do. You get to list lots of people come before you <laughs> with lots of problems. Um, Having a long history with this area, um, I, I can tell you that um, the challenge was put before us. I think we met the challenge. Your language is up to you on what you want to put in, but I do believe you could put in something that does suggest that, um, and I'll stop there for a second, the management agreement with SMG expires this year. so. Think about what you might want to phrase as a suggestive element for future consideration for the operation of all of the complex, but the parking is managed by SMG. So that language will be um, incorporated in some fashion into the new agreement or the amended agreement should they continue on. So um, I wouldn't be too stringent. I would add some, some uh, flexibility or some malleable language. Um, but I think that the suggestion is is that uh, you work with the traffic department, you work with the administration, you work with uh, law enforcement, and you work with the public users to see if there's an opportunity to create a more streamlined process, possibly incorporating automation. But I don't think, uh, I think anything hard and fast may be problematic. I, I'd prefer to have at least the flexibility because the general public will chime in on whatever our decision is. They are the ones we will impact, just like we're talking about impacting now with your final decisions. I hope that answers your question. Um, yes, thank you. That, that really helped a lot. First, to understand that, that change percentage or relative percentage, okay. I think, is really important for us to sort of get a sense of how much this is going to change the current situation with the addition of the 471 parking and then the possibility of, of suggested language. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Ed, do you need That parking in front of Mulcahy Stadium is, it's more than is required, but yes. So there's a suggestion made by, or a comment made by traffic department about providing an ADA parking plan. Is that something, it wasn't a condition, it was just discussed as a comment. Um, is that something that would, would be problematic or? Well, it was, it was a little difficult to understand what it was. I think what the comment was regarding was you have four or five buildings and where are the ADA spaces relative to each one of those buildings? And, yeah, that, that's not quite how we read that. Um, okay. So then, um, that, that's fine. I was going to make yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was. It's not a big deal. It was very difficult to understand exactly what the point is but uh, again each of the facilities has its own dedicated parking uh, you know we meet the, the overall standards but they're allocated by building you know maybe some buildings have more than than others but you know it's Anchorage football stadium for example it's highly problematic from a, a disability standpoint because getting into that everything is inaccessible 
you know, by by standard, it's right. so it doesn't have any. Well, there's more on Mulcahy that probably address that to a great degree because that's about the nearest place to provide those because that's a drive lane and a fire fire lane access, as you may know. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, and you know, I I appreciate your guys' dialogue and I appreciate the traffic study and I I do appreciate you guys coming here and staying this long, but. I'm still, I'm having a hard time being in favor of the project based on just the traffic comments and it's hard to condition a no tickets bitter and I mean I respect the comments from Mr. Rada saying you know make it loose and so we'll see if we can condition it but I have a hard time supporting a motion that that doesn't solve that. I don't feel like that it's solved it. It's kind of like a band-aid and it doesn't help the traffic so if there's anything that you could do to convince me otherwise <laughs> uh, Madam Chair Commissioner Leonetti and the Commission as a whole I I guess you know we we've, we've got a really tough problem here and it, it's not one that can be easily be fixed without throwing about 200 million dollars at this place so you know band-aid that's the way we do recreation in this town we have band-aided every stinking recreation facility in this town from time immemorial since 1914 when they probably said you know you don't use that Svin why don't we play football there you know I mean that's just the nature of recreation in this town you know we pass we can't pass a six million dollar bond for recreation this town we can pass one and a half, and we can pass two. So that's what John Rada puts on the on on the the bond. That's what we pass, you know. So uh, it looks like a band aid. That's that's the way we do recreation in this town. It it would be nice if we were Boulder, Colorado. Uh, former park director Jeff Dillon had walked into a job where he had eighty five million dollars in bond money to buy parkland not to build anything to buy parkland boulder is an anchorage and anchorage isn't boulder we band-aid everything this is a pretty darn good band-aid you know we are we are increasing the the traf the the parking by a third when we increase that parking that that removes the amount of traffic that's parking in adjacent neighborhoods which is what we tried to fix uh, we know we have some exiting and entry, and we found that the biggest problem is internal. Uh, it'd be nice if we could throw another couple exits at this thing, but the problem is, you know, it gets back to the building of the facility itself. Was it in the right place? It's hard to argue that it was, but it doesn't matter. It's what we have. Uh, we're surrounded by two major arterials with very constrained rights of way. We can't add lanes by taking parkland and converting it for all sorts of reasons. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a band-aid, but should you support it? This moves us so much farther into compliance with where we need to be that you could deny this, but what are you going to see instead? You know, what, what are you going to substitute for this project? There, there's not a really good solution that, that is any better than this. We could try exiting south. We could throw on more exits. We could throw on more entrances. But, you know, it's those, those, those walls you run into are pretty significant. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's up to your discretion, but it's a tough problem. Have we, have we solved everything? No, but have we solved a lot? We've solved a lot. And, and, you know, and I just, you know, would ask you to keep, you know, look at, stay at that 40,000 foot level for a while and say, you know, well, here's the problems that we move closer to resolving this and giving us the facility we need. And the answer is, yeah. And among other things, remember that, that where we started with this was a parking lot out at the west side in the existing Mulcahy. American Legion Baseball has given up a tremendous amount to make this a tremendously better project by agreeing to move their stadium and giving up two baseball fields that they actively use. So, you know, there's been a tremendous amount of movement to make this work on the part of a lot of different parties. So, you know, it's easy to focus on this little and saying, well, you didn't move this an inch. Well, we've moved yards. 
we've moved, we've moved, you know, a hundred yards with these facilities. So, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd ask you to keep perspective in this and where we are versus where we started and where we are right now. But where we can be is really good. It's a lot better. So I just leave that up to you. And unless there's any other questions, I Thank look forward you. to your discussion. Uh, Commissioner James Sohill. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I had a kind of a simple question. Parking garages all collect tickets on the way in and money on the way out. Why don't you collect money on the way out so all the queuing occur occurs on site? Yeah, that's <laughs> a... <laughs> I'm not trying to push Dwayne out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, alcohol becomes an issue. Pure and simple. Dr driving out, people are drunk, so you can't get their money? I know what it's like. I've been on the receiving end. I've got enough facilities to worry about. The last thing you want to do is add that component yeah. when people are trying to leave. And it's a, it's a reality. Now, how they manage the facilities and what goes on, but wow. you don't want to end up with complicating factors, um, especially when you've got a max parking lot playoff game. That's reality. So, okay. Sorry. Interesting response. That was your simple question. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you collect money from the drunks on the way out? <laughs> Okay, Commissioner. That, that, that's all I had, Madam okay. Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Jerry Winchester. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, the division, the recommendations of which there are nine here and, and then some advisory comments. I mean, I just was kind of trying to figure out, are you agreeing to these? Are you not agreeing to these? Where, where are you at on these? Uh, through the Chair, Commissioner Winchester, we're fine with all of them. The reality is on two and, and nine, that's provided there is a vertical separation right. and there is the delineation of those parking areas. Uh, you've talked about adding one, which you, you may want to add, but you know, those two are there, but we can, you know, it, it says consider, among other things, consider. Right. And you know, that's, we can do that. Uh, nine, provide wheel stops. Well, we don't need that because we're going to have, we have curves, they just, uh, perhaps the note wasn't clear enough or something. So, you know, if you leave those in, they're going to be shown in the final plan. So they're easy to resolve. Leave them in, take them out. Doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get a sense of if we, yeah, if we no. have a motion here. What, is there anything particular here that we have to make a difference on? Or you're, if we just said accept all of these, we're, we're, go, we're okay. And if we add something to this, well, there is one. Uh, I'm sorry, and it's. It, I apologize. Number five is is an issue that we we should discuss. Yeah, I, I didn't um, think you'd like that one. Yeah, I, I was I, really wondering. <laughs> I by mistake I didn't circle that one, and I intended. Let me get that drawing. And the the point is just so that everybody understands what's being suggested is that these end lanes that you see here. That, that curves be put around those. So imagine uh, the end of uh, an Aces game and it snowed three or four inches and that's not unusual, I mean this year it's unusual, but it hasn't been necessarily been unusual. Lane markers are gone, half the traffic's gone, people are coming out, not to suggest people are drinking in there, but they very well may be since the bars are open. But people are trying to find their way and you don't, necessarily see those drive aisles and you got a curb that that's covered in snow uh, so it's highly problematic I think from a wayfinding I mean that works if what you got is a big landscaped island or you have a light post there and you, a, a strong vertical element de delineates so that's one issue is that that's real scary from a liability standpoint not to mention that public safety hazard the other issue is snow clearing, uh, you know, that, the, the way they, if you look, the, the, the uh, well, it's upside down, which doesn't help. But, 
we we have uh, snow down uh, hall area down there, plow area down in the south area. So we plow to the east, then we plow to the south and stockpile until it's hauled off. And so uh, those things in the, you know, when they're moving stuff, it's blow and go, man. They are they are working and that's that's a little scary. So we understand the comment. Uh, the it, It's a good comment and you know, we like the idea, but it, it's got a lot of real problems associated with it. And the one that is really scary, I think, is is that wayfinding component when everything empties. You know, maybe early in the evening when everything's scraped down, and you got guys out there guiding people where to park and flagging, and that works. But at the end of the evening, it is unfortunately often a free for all, which is why at least the organization we have has defined exits that are very clear and easy to find and dispersed, whereas now they're quite concentrated. Thank you. So, so, so I, would ask, I would agree with all those comments. This is why I'm asking you sort of one by one. So basically one through four. One is good. Delete. Two could stay or go. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, that's pretty standard stuff. Right. We do that all the time. Four, we can certainly provide that, uh, looking for the light levels at the property line. Five, we wish to be deleted. Six, delineate snow storage areas, uh, we, that's easy. Uh, ensure that the surface runoff, everything has to comply with that. That's, that's fine, and we're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we did look at that specifically to ensure that we were good, and please, that, that would be fine. Uh, eight, ADA ramps, all those have to have ramps. I mean, that's, that's code. And nine, you can leave it in there or not. We, we have that. You can delete it, and the world will be good. You can leave it in. Uh, world will be good as well. Uh, the advisory comments, advisory, you know, it, it provides a little ammunition when Mr. Rada uh, goes to his meetings. He's got that. And so five is, is problematic, and thank you for asking. Yes, and, and so, it, I mean, and these advisory comments kind of cover some of the issues we've discussed in terms of, you know, dealing with ticket takers and cashiers and, and, and it gives you something to go back with. So I, I don't know that we need to rewrite that. I was just asking for language that would be supportive. Yeah, and I think Mr. Rod outlined a, a possible thought. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? No? Can I get a motion to approve? We have a motion to approve by Monica Emerton and seconded by Jerry Winchester. Uh, Monica Emerton, will you like to speak to your motion? Yeah, I'll uh, state my motion first, if that's okay. Um, so I would like to move to approve case 2015-0008, subject to staff conditions one through four, uh, leave, move, removing five, six through nine with the advisory com comments one through three. Uh, Commissioner Monica Emerton, would you like to speak to your motion? Sure. Um, it seems like you guys have done a lot of work on this project and it's, it's a hell of a Band-Aid. Um, I find also that this does uh, work with um, government policies, policy number 44, policy number 50, and policy number 78. Uh, so that will help make some findings for approval. Um, I do agree with staff conditions, and I do agree with the comments for removing number five. So that was why I removed that one. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I, I would like to add the comment, and most of this was stated earlier. Uh, I, I really do respect it and, and, and admire your determination to get a 30% increase in parking spaces in one of the most difficult site I think we've all probably ever encountered on, uh, you know, in the city of Anchorage. And to meet those requirements for the Department of Recreation, Mr. Rada, I mean, it's got to be a real program that you run there to uh, to mix all of that. 
and I hope this adds the flexibility that we need there and, and the fact that the American Legion has agreed to move and, and uh, giving up those, those ball fields is a huge change uh, from what we saw before, which is I think what sort of hit the whole commission was, wow, this is a major change from what we saw before and trying to get our arms around uh, all the different reasons and why. Uh, I hope you appreciate the, the fact that I think the commission's really uh, looked at it hard and, and with a lot of expertise. I'm going to support the motion. I, uh, I think it's long overdue uh, improvement. Unfortunately, the bonds didn't pass, so I don't know where you're going to get the money to do this, but at least we can approve uh, you moving forward with this and hopefully find the funds uh, to make this happen. Um, I attend a lot of events down there and took my kids to Ben Bokey to play hockey all their lives and football stadiums and all of that. We've all used this facility. And uh, it is a Band-Aid, a very big Band-Aid, but a vast improvement. And I agree with you, Wayne, Mr. Adams, that this is really um, something that um, we, we can all be proud to say, hey, we, we really did make something happen here. It's needed since 1984. <laughs> and this is 2015, so it's, it's 20 years past due. So thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, I do. I have my button pushed. I believe there's others as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just going to add some findings of facts. Um, the site is located north of Chester Creek Trail, west of Gamel Street, south of 16th Avenue, and east of A Street. The project is being reviewed under the old Title 21, and the property is currently zoned PLIP. The project consists of the construction of a new Mulcahy Stadium to replace the aging facility and the provisions of parking improvements for the full sports complex. The Chester Creek Sports Complex includes Sullivan Arena, Ben Bokey, Ice Arena, Anchorage Football Stadium, Mulcahy Stadium, Kozinski Baseball Fields, and two outdoor hockey rinks. The project relocates Mulcahy Stadium to the north of the existing Kaczynski Fields number three and four and is moved slightly, no, period. The Kozinski Fields number three and number four are maintained as they currently exist today. Project conforms to the following MOA Comp 2020 plan, policy number 44, design and build public improvements for longer term use, I believe was already said. Number 50, healthy mature trees and forested areas shall be retained as much as possible. Policy 78, design municipal, municipal facilities frequented by the public, particularly schools to accommodate year round multi use or multi purpose rather activities. And the last one is the total number of existing parking spaces is 1,394. This project will provide a total of 1,865 parking spaces. I should say approximately 1,865. That's it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the main motion to add condition number 10 to stripe a pedestrian walkway through the parking restripe area to continue the proposed walkway to Sullivan Arena. Can I get a second uh, motion to amend the con to add a condition? I have a second by Ed Leonelli. Madam Chair, I would encourage the, uh, the board to support the amendment. Um, I think continuing of the pedestrian walkway over to the Sullivan is an important uh, concept. And um, I heard from the petitioner they were willing to, to do that. And, and uh, I would like to see that added to the project. Yeah, we almost forgot about that. OK. So we go back to the original motion. I think we need to it's vote on the amendment. On. Oh, OK. Is there any additional discussion?
Okay, and now we get to vote. Sir, are we voting on the amendment? Yeah, voting on the amendment. <clears throat> okay, the motion is approved. Madam Chair, if I may continue. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, and, and I think here is where I, I don't make some friends. Um, I don't intend to, to support the motion. Um, I think the elimination of the access to A Street and the elimination to the, of the access to, to Gamble uh, are significant changes from the, uh, the concept we approved. Um, I think the study done by uh, Stantec was very good. I think it brought a lot of issues to light uh, for some improvements within the, the site. But I still believe that those additional accesses will provide improvements to the overall ingress and egress to the site. Um, I, I would cite uh, their analysis where they looked at the, the access option out A3. Um, their, their analysis did note that uh, uh, leaving the site through the additional access to A Street would provide additional pedestrian separation and improvement safety there, and I think that's important. Uh, I also believe having the additional access off of A Street um, will, will improve uh, the overall uh, uh, function of the site. Um, we have an opportunity to improve the access into the uh, Chester Creek Sports Complex, and I, 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 I think we shouldn't miss that. Um, and I do understand that it's going to add costs. I do understand that it's going to add uh, approval uh, uh, problems for, for the project. Um, but I think it's a, there are important components to the overall issue of the Chester Creek uh, Sports Complex. If we had a master plan that included those facilities and a phasing plan where they would be done later, um, I would be amenable to that but completely eliminating them from the site plan, uh, I just think is a mistake. I think we need to take this opportunity um, to improve access to, to the area. And because that has been eliminated, I cannot support this site plan approval. And I will be voting no. Ed Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, could you restate which conditions are included right now? Uh, conditions one through four, we eliminated condition number five, and then conditions six through to, through ten, but then we're, uh, we're adding one through the amendment. Okay, thank you. Um, I have similar thoughts as Mr. Sawhill and, and agree with a lot of his statements and I cannot support the motion. Um, I think that there are viable alternatives and I think that if there was another, um, I think that if there was a master plan that showed, you know, these are the things that are going to be happening, this is our plan right now, this is um, the course of action that we're going to go down and these are the things we're going to check off, then that would be um, something that I could support, but that hasn't been presented tonight um, as a viable alternative. So um, that's it. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Commissioner Joe Condon. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I intend to support the motion. Um, with the caveat that uh, I think that the petitioner has heard uh, many concerns from the board tonight. And if going forward you do not resolve the issues that you have heard come before you, uh, you're going to be hearing more from the public about not resolving ticket taking issues, egress from the site. Um, it's a problematic site, but I believe that it's a project that needs to move forward and 
I intend to support it. Thank you. Commissioner Jerry Winchester. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had spoke that I will support the motion. Um, I want to include with that the, the fact that this has been um, understood that there are always more options, uh, but I think that it has been studied to the fact that um, we, we are left with fewer options to making an improvement here. And if we don't pass something like this, it's been really studied to this effect tonight, uh, we basically eliminate uh, the potential to make any improvement in this area for a considerably longer time, whether they get the funds together or not, but I think they're working hard to do that. Um, to send them back to redesign at this point, um, when we're at the verge of actually making a major change to solve the problem there with the adding of 471 spaces. Yes, getting on the site is difficult. Yes, getting off the site is difficult. But if you go to any 10,000 seat arena or 5,000 seat arena in the world, you don't expect to drive in in five minutes and have your seat and leave and five minutes later you're home. I mean, it's a major event that you're going to. It's part of what you do. Yes, there's the ticket takers. Yes, they're going to address that. Yes, they're going to try to move people on and off this site better. But I find this such a vast improvement from the current scenario that we, as a commission, could be putting ourselves in a position of saying, okay, nothing now will happen for another 10 years because for them to get the money together to now go try to study how to get onto A Street and to put together all of those parameters, uh, whether it's, you know, working with the, the, uh, the water drainage or the, the issues of who owns the land and how can they get more lanes. Um, I think that we can continue that work over time, meaning we get this part done and then we turn around. I mean, there's always the ability to someday hopefully go south and, and tie all the way into Fireweed Lane. We discussed that on our last go round. But to do that now and to spend the five million or three million or whatever the number of millions it is to make something like that happen isn't going to happen. And I think Mr. Adams made a good point. We as a city band-aid our recreational services. I mean, we just, that's what we do. It's, you know, it's not a top priority. Roads and water and sewer and other things become higher priority than this. Um, but this project makes a, a huge defin, definition of what we think should happen and, and in a direction that's the right direction for this Chester Creek facility. And uh, having lived here my entire life, this is the first you know, time I've been able to say, wow, you're going to make a difference there. You moved Mulcahy, you, you got the ability to move Mulcahy, put the parking in the middle, and, and use it for all of those facilities. Um, so I'm going to support it, but I would, I would urge the commission to reconsider this situation uh, in light of what, what it does for the overall anchorage ability for this 6 to 10 or 19 million, whatever the number is, that they're going to be able to, to generate to do this, even if they do it in phases. So um, I, I, I understand everybody's concerns and the opportunities that we may be giving up here, but I think we have to weigh the opportunities that we're giving up against the huge opportunity to make a difference here for the, for the generation today. And we will be giving that up for another potentially five or ten years if we decide to say, okay, this is not good enough, we got to go back to the drawing board and start over and, and come up with more solutions because it will be five years before we will see this again. I won't be here, I can tell you. It'll be another group. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Monica Emerton. Um, I guess I want to echo Jay Win Commissioner Winchester's comments. I, but as of right now, we have two people who are saying that they are going to vote this down, which means this will not pass because we have to have five positives. Um, so <laughs> that being said, is there, I mean, it, 
there anything we can do to convince you guys? Or are you guys pretty set? Like if we're going back to construct, like, I mean, and then where does that put us? Are we back to redesign again? Which is, you know, this is final site plan review. Um, so I guess I wanted to make that very clear that we're all on the same page because yeah. we don't have Joe. He's, he's abstained from this. So if you two are both no, this will not pass because that only leaves four positives. Um, and I'm not saying that to make you guys change your minds. I just want to make sure we all are on the same Shady page and we know where we're at. That's so, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I guess that's kind of, I don't know, Sharon, what are our options here? <clears throat> Um, I think you've stated what the options are. Um, it either will pass tonight or it won't, and you've, you've gotten the numbers right. Yeah. Um, we need five tonight, and as it stands, we only have four. Um, so it's up to the commission. Okay, thank you. I pushed my button. <laughs> I, I pushed my Commissioner Ed Leonetti. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. She's cleared me again. <laughs> I did not realize we're in a negative scenario here, and I do appreciate the comments from Mr. Winchester, um, and I do not want to stop this project. That is not the intention. I do think that there is, um, there is room for growth, and as other projects have come through here, we have conditioned them when we have been in this scenario. However, I am at a loss on how to condition this. Um, I think it gets into a tricky scenario for Mr. Rada and the Parks Department if we start saying, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that for the management side of it. But I do understand the concept that, um, and I do realize that the, the support that has come from the general public on these things is certainly not like other communities and it's very lacking at times and it seems like this is one of the, those times so in light of that and in light of um, not um, having a master plan as I referenced before it's, it's still difficult to support something that you have this gut feeling that that, that, that has a different solution <laughs> and so it's you know I recognize that it has come a long ways and it has done a lot of things and Mr. Winchester made a good point, and that is, you know, there isn't anything on this plan that prohibits a A Street connection in the future or a South um, exit connection in the future. Um, it's just not currently on these plans, and that is helpful, and that helps me go the other direction now. <laughs> so I will be in favor of that um, in light of those comments. Thank you. Commissioner James Sawhill. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I guess in, in response to some of the of, of Commissioner Winchester's comments, I, I think there's a lot of good things in this site plan, a lot of good things. Um, and um, I think there's going to be some significant improvements because of, of the project. I, I think one of the issues with the, the Chester Creek Sports Complex is there's too much stuff here. and. You know, maybe one of the answers is to move some of the stuff. And here we are about to build a new Mulcahy Stadium, and I would suggest maybe the better location for Mulcahy Stadium is at 3500 Tudor Road. There's plenty of room there, and there's great access and all the parking a guy could ever want. Um, and then we can uh, not have so much of an issue here and have more parking for Sullivan Arena. Um, now every high school in town has a stadium. So why do we have a stadium here? Maybe the stadium can go away. Scotty Gomez has two sheets of ice that I don't think are appropriate at this location. Maybe they can go away and we could have more parking. So one of my comments is we have too much stuff here and it's causing us problems and it's causing congestion and it's impacting our roadways. Um, so that's one solution. Um, I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm being the guy that says, Let's go back to our concept approval. These two accesses were on our concept approval, and I liked our concept approval. And so I don't think, you know, going back to our concept approval, evidently they were okay then, um, but they're not okay now. And uh, my opinion is the site design is better with those two accesses. And, and for that reason, 
I, I feel strongly that I can't approve that. And I'm happy to say that with the notion that it's going to go forward in spite of my best efforts. So uh, I will shut up. <laughs> Commissioner Jerry Winchester. Thank you, Mr. Sawhill and, uh, and Mr. Leonetti. I, I really appreciate both of your uh, comments and, and, your, and your look at this situation. I, I mean, my question is, then why don't we add an advisory comment to this that we would still like to see a master plan continued for the Chester Creek Sports Complex that includes additional access to A Street and or Fireweed Lane or other opportunities as the future might allow. I mean, I don't mind putting a statement in here that as a commission, we're still advising them that you have a lot of stuff on this site and you haven't completely fixed the problem and we want to see the city go forward with the idea of fixing that in the future. Do you, Mr. Sawhill, I mean, I'm, I'm open to putting that kind of a comment and, and, and putting it straightforward right on the record from this commission. I, I, Mr. Winchester, I considered uh, adding an additional condition of approval to uh, require the construction of both those roads. Yeah, and that's within our authority to do that, um, but I have decided not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this is one of those tough, tough situations where we have a major transportation component weaving in a parks and rec component. And we have money for roads and we have money for parks. And my personal opinion is we need some road money to come help the parks out. Um, it's easier for us to get road money, road bonds pass. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what we have before us. Um, I, uh, so I, I, I thought about adding that condition and I have not. Um, I, I still think it would be better with them, but I'm, I resolved myself to losing this issue and want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well. Commissioner? Oh, okay. I thought you was yeah. okay. So, did there's any additional discussion? Uh, I have one thing yet. Um, okay, Commissioner. I would like to move that we add an advisory comment uh, that states that this commission still would like the municipality to proceed with master planning and engaging the ideas of additional access to this site via A Street and or other possibilities, including Firewood Lane, uh, that those don't get lost just because we've approved this. It is a motion, and it looks like it's seconded by Mr. Leonetti. as an amendment to the, obviously it's an amendment. Uh, Commissioner Monique Emerton. Uh, the only discussion I'd have along this lines is I know we've gotten into this before where we can't uh, put something that might be on a future project on an existing project. And that would be kind of what I'd worry that this amendment does is that we're trying to tie something, like make this project hold up to a future project, which we can't do. And so. Uh, the, so it would, it's not a condition of approval. You're it's an advisory comment. Okay. And, okay. Okay. That's the only thing I wanted to clarify and make sure that that's what we're talking about. So, okay. Advisory comments. Okay. Any additional discussion? So we start voting. Yeah, the, the motion failed. Now, can we go back to the original motion and we start voting?
This is the main motion. Could we just do a um, hands up or verbal voting? Okay, who is approving the motion? How many we were? Five. Five? Okay, we have five, and uh, I guess uh, we know <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sahel is not approving. Uh, the motion has passed. Motion has passed, uh, subject to conditions one through four, uh, six through ten, delete condition number five, and adding the condition of uh, additional striping to connect the pedestrian all the way to Sullivan Arena, east-west. Thank you. May I approach uh, the chair and the body? Is that acceptable? <laughs> um, one, I appreciate the dialogue. I appreciate everybody's concerns. Um, this is immeasurable. I don't think you realize the significance, and I didn't want to say anything to try and leverage or influence. Without this approval tonight, the project was dead, period. Because without this, there would be no money coming from Juno, even if there's a chance it would have killed it. That's that's the bottom line. You know, I mean, it, what you did was the right thing to do, I believe. But the long answer for me, um, after spending a lot of time and effort and a lot of other people, a lot of community-minded people, um, that would have been the death knoll, and we would have not had anything to work with other than the continued problems. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, just I was missing to read the appeal of process. An individual may have appeal rights relating, re, relating to any action the Urban Design Commission takes, except commission, commission recommendations to the Assembly, which are not appealable. Appeals must be filed with the clerk's office within 20 days after approval by the Urban Design Commission of the resolution, which is the Commission's final decision. A fee for the appeal is required at the time of fi filing. Okay, and now we're going to go back to the consent agenda. Okay. 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 Can we get a motion to postpone case 2015-0015? I move to postpone case 2015-0015 to 8-12-15. Okay. We have a motion to postpone by Monica Emerton, and we have a second by uh, Commissioner Jerry Winchester. Okay. It all in favor of postponed? It should be understood. Is that postponed? Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't say minutes anymore. The motion is approved. I think everyone is vote, isn't it? Yes. Oh, there you go. It was me. <laughs> the motion is approved. Okay, now we're going back to the consent agenda. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the remaining items in the consent agenda? I have, okay, I have a motion by Jerry Winchester and a second by Joe Miller. So, good, okay, so we don't have any public hearings. Uh, any reports from the chair? No, any secretary, committee? 
Um, can we get a motion to adjourn the meeting? We have a motion to adjourn by Jerry Winchester and a second by Nicole Rim. The meeting is done. <laughs>